All right, so I am going to be talking about React Native today. And um, I'm sure like many of you guys, I was not quite sure what I wanted to do my tech talk on. And you know, I'm brainstorming some ideas and I take the train to work, so of course I'm trying to make use of my commute and I'm looking up, what can I do my tech talk on? And I look up and everyone's on their phone. <laughs> So that sparked something in my head, and I said, you know what? Being on your phone is such a prominent part of our society. Why don't I do my tech talk on something that's relatable, something that we all use, and something that's pertainable to all of our lives? And so I thought React Native would be a uh, great tool to learn. Um, we use a ton of mobile apps in our lives, and we learned React. I love React. I love JavaScript. I assume you guys all do, too. So combine those all, and here we are today. All right, so the agenda. We'll talk a little bit about what a native versus a web app is, um, some differences between React and React Native, and then we'll just do a little bit of a deep dive into the Navigator component. So what is a native versus web app? This is not a rhetorical question. Do you guys know what the difference is? Perfect, yeah. Well, you pretty much hit it spot on, but here's some more um, official definitions. So in regards to mobile, a web app you're still using on your mobile device, but you're using it through a browser. So it's a client-server software application in which the client or user interface runs in a web browser. A native app is developed for use on a particular platform or device and it can interact with and take advantage of operating system features and other software. So to go deep into that, it's, you know, it's either made for an iPhone, an iOS system, or it's made for an Android. And because of that, it can take advantage of different features like, um, you know, it can, use, it can use operating system features like your geolocation, or it can pull up your camera roll. Um, so that is really cool. And in the past, Native apps could only be written in Java for Android or in Objective-C or Swift for iOS. Um, so it's really awesome that Facebook came out with React Native and is allowing us to write um, native applications just in JavaScript, our favorite language. <laughs> All right, so we are going to exit this. And I'm just going to run the command React Native, run iOS. And here you'll see this popping up to the left is um, a simulator. And this is brought by Xcode. So um, there's an Android similar simulator and an iPhone, sim or an iPhone simulator, which you can see here. So I'm just going to be doing the iPhone simulation, but um, Android works pretty similar. Okay, let's see here if I can, huh, can't see the bottom of that, apologize. We'll have to be creative. All right, so uh, let's go into some differences between React and React Native. So first of all, DOM elements. So if we click here, okay. So in React, we interact with the DOM just as we would normal HTML. We can use JSX to you know, use our HTML tags, use a div tag, use a paragraph tag, whatever it may be. Um, React Native is not the same. You can actually not use any HTML. You have to import all of your components um, from the React Native library. Uh, and you can use similar components to what you would find as tags in HTML, but they're not quite the same. So I've made some comparisons here. A div tag and a view tag, a span and a paragraph tag versus a text component, um, unordered list and ordered list versus a list view and a scroll view component. So if we, that button that you can't see just says home. All right, so styling. So. As far as styling, uh, just like you can't use HTML, you also cannot use CSS. So there is a component given to you by React Native, and it is called the style sheet component. And basically what the style sheet component is, is it creates 
this JavaScript object, um, which keys can be, you know, anything you normally name it, like a tag or an ID name. Um, and pretty similar to CSS, you know, you can use like margin and padding, but you just have to make sure it's all written, camel case, all JavaScript. Um, then in addition, all of your components are past a style prop. And so basically how you do inset inline styling with React and you pass in an object in that style prop, that's pretty much how you should do your styling for um, React Native. And basically you could just pass in um, the key, so like the container, as what it's referencing. And it'll grab in everything that you've written in that style sheet uh, that references container. OK, so touch events. So obviously, web apps don't really listen to touch events at all. You listen to on-click handlers. But um, definitely, that's an important feature of a native app. So there's tappable components. Um, a lot of times, those are buttons. Um, but they have to also listen for long presses versus short presses. Um, there's scrolling views. There's swiping, pinch to zoom. All of these things are components that you can grab from the React Native library, but um, just keep in mind that they are important to use and um, you should be taking advantage of them when writing a native app. Okay, so uh, DevTools. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you open DevTools. And I'm just gonna point out a couple of the features just because there's a lot here. So one thing that I think is cool is this hot reloading versus live reloading. And so basically what hot reloading does is it will, um, it will memorize your app and basically when you make a change and you want to do like a small change, like a little style change or add some text, it'll display it on the same scene you're currently on. So scenes are basically, you know, like what slide, what, what page of your iPhone you're on. So, um, you know, if I was making a change to this dev tool scene or adjusting a lot of little things with styling, I probably wouldn't want to use hot reloading because it would just render the dev tools right away instead of restarting my app versus that's what uh, live reloading is. is it's going to start from the beginning. You get the full experience, so it's definitely useful in other cases, but um, not so much with mi minor style changes. Another thing that's cool is this inspector. So on the inspector, you can tap something, and basically it'll show you all of your um, styling that you have going on, and you can you know, click around and view different, different parts of your application. So you just have to remember to hide the inspector when you're done with it. And we'll go back home. So this final mystery button that I know you guys were so curious about is the navigation. <laughs> so the navigation. There is a navigator component. And this is one of the options that you can use for navigation in uh, React Native. But there are plenty others out there. Uh, this one is given to you by React Native. So basically what you would do is on your main um, component, whatever your first general component is, you'd import this, na import the navigator component. And the navigator component takes in an initial route, which is an object, and you can pass it whatever um, properties you want on that object. So a common property to pass it is name. Here I've passed it title as well. Um, and then it also passes a render scene. And render scene is a function. And so you'd put all of this on, on that initial um, main component. And basically, render scene would take in route, which is an object, just like you saw that initial route, and navigator, which is an array. And this is pretty similar to like browser history or hash history, where it's going to render whatever the last um, object is in that array. Um, and this render scene function is going to tell it what to render based on uh, a criteria in that. So in this case, you can see we're doing if the route name is home, render the home container. Um, this also gives you the ability to, to pass props along uh, with it. A cool thing about React Native is that you can really see the difference between you know, pushing and popping from the array, which you can't see in web browsers. For, so for instance, um, when I click this DOM element, uh, this scene is being pushed into the array, which is why you can see it slide to the left. Uh, when I go home, that scene is being popped off from the array, and you can see it slide to the left. So 
Uh, React Native is really cool. You guys should definitely check it out. And I think that it's awesome that we live in a time where we can develop native apps in JavaScript. So I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>